Well, y'all already know. Coach has been doing his rounds on what's happening with the recruiting right now with all of the different teams in the SWAC, the MEI, the CIAA, the SIAC. And guys, we got more content coming to you from all of them. But right now, we're going to talk about none other than Prairie View. Prairie View a and That's right. Coach McDowell is on the recruiting trail looking to bring them athletes into the program in which he's going to get some things popped off this season. And you know, they came just a game short of meeting Jackson State in that SWAC championship in back-to-back -back years. They lost to Mississippi Valley State that last game of the season. You know, all you had to do was pull it out, but it didn't happen. But I'll tell you what, he went out there and found somebody that's going to be a big target for QB1 Connolly over there at Prairie View and m and trust and believe. They just shored up some other things over there as well. That running game is looking a little, you know, mm, they got the firepower back there. But we're going to talk about this target that they just brought into Prairie View and m that's going to go ahead and set this thing off this upcoming season. Let's get into it right after this. You know, it's your favorite coach back at it again. Ten toes down, but I'll tell you how it all went down. This is Tomorrow Leader Sports Network with your host, Coach Walker. If you're new to the channel, please like, share, subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you can get all upcoming videos. For all my leaders out there, welcome back. Y'all know the drill. Y'all know the routine. If you haven't done so already, please like, comment, and share these videos. And tap in the friend or two and tell them to come on in. It's not the positive vibe. We're just having a good time talking about HBCU sports. And don't forget, you can follow us on all social media platforms. The links are listed down below in the description. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get on in this thing. But first, don't forget, if you haven't done so already, please turn on all post notification bells so you get all upcoming videos from Coach Walker. And another thing, for all my business owners out there, if you're looking to do business with somebody, why not call on your favorite coach? Hey, I'm down to help out any business there is that's looking to get into some things, you know, that that, that want to do some business with Coach Walker at Tomorrow Leader Sports Network. So we definitely can go ahead and link up and do some things. Follow me. Uh, if you don't have my email address, you can email me at TLS in info at gmail.com. That is TLS in info at gmail.com. Or you can follow me on Twitter at TLS in 12 or Instagram at TL Sports Network, all right? So, guys, like, like I said, hit coach up. Coach is down to do business with anybody. Let's get into this thing. Let's go ahead and keep raising the bar as far as where we're looking to take this thing this upcoming 2023 year. But, guys, we're going to go ahead and talk about this thing because you know what? Prairie View came, like I said, it came in second in the West Division last year in the SWAC. And, like I said, they was one game away from securing that repeat matchup between Jackson State and the SWAC Championship. They couldn't get over the hump. It seemed like, you know, everybody kind of figured out the, the MO as far as with how Prairie View's offense was going to be ran. Now, don't get me wrong. They did do a lot of running last year. Like I said, Conley, boy, he pulled that bad boy down in the heartbeat, take off up the field, and you had to account for that young man out there on the field running that ball. But, you know, Coach McDuffie said, wait, whoa, whoa. Let me get the athletes in here for you, son, so we go ahead and open this thing up. Because I believe Conley threw for, I think it was like 1,300 yards last season. But just think, if he had some more targets out there on the field, that was, you know, able-bodied targets to catch passes that was thrown to him. I think that 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 uh, total of yards uh, that he threw for last season would have been a lot higher than what they were. Not saying that uh, not saying that the receivers that was out there didn't do their job. I want to make sure I clarify that because I know some folks get pissed off real quick. I'm like, Come on, coach. What you trying to say, bro? You trying to say I wasn't doing my thing out there? No, I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is, is that the bar has been raised as far as expectations of what everyone is looking forward to seeing out there on the field. And not only that, but the coaches are starting to let those, let those wheels turn a little bit like, hey, we got to make some changes out here that's going to allow us to get out here and compete at a top-tier level. Not just come out here and compete in the swag because you never know. You might have that type of record that might get you over the FCS playoffs. And you know you got folks from time to time when they stick their toe over that water just to see how cool that water really is. But, you know, we'll say that conversation for another day. Conley would throw that ball when he needed to. But Conley got a big target that's coming into Prairie View this upcoming season. And the young man that I'm talking about is a former two-star athlete that goes by the name of Shamar Sack. You heard me. Shamar Savage. Sa hey, he's savage. He's a savage out there on the field. For real. For real. Real talk. This young man, listen. I know y'all like coach, but he's only a two-star. Let me break something down to you. This young man is six foot five. Excuse me, six foot four, 210 pounds. Now he's transferring in from Mount San Antonio College. While he was at Mount San Antonio College. Savage through three games, had 18 receptions for 371 yards and four touchdowns. Now, Conley and Savage is going to hook up many times out there on the field. 
Watching this young man run routes out there on the field for his previous quarterback that he played for, this young man will go up and get that ball at his highest point. Not only that, if he needs to stretch out and catch a pass or two, that young man go catch that ball because I'm going to tell you now, if you don't get up in this man's chest coming off the line of scrimmage, catch Christmas. Get, hey, that young man, I'm going to put it to you like this. You remember when Randy Moss was with the Minnesota Vikings? I bet he had when Randy Moss was with the New England Patriots and all he did was just throw his hand up and they just threw that daggone ball down the field. He just went and got it. That's your guy right there. Trust me. If you don't get up in this man's chest to stop him getting off that line of scrimmage to try to reroute him on a route, you can forget it. You can forget it. There's no playing catch technique with this young man. You can forget that. If you're not willing to come in here and get your DBs to get up on that line of scrimmage and get aggressive with this young man, this young man's going to peel the dag on top of the defensive coverage off all day long. It doesn't, it doesn't even matter if you want to zone uh, coverage this young man. Heck, he'll go right off and come back to the quarterback, allowing that quarterback to throw the ball to him to get them chains moving going down the field. Or better yet, get them in position to where now you're looking at a second and two or a third and two or third and one. This young man is very smart out there on that field. Trust me when I tell you, this young man is going to be a definite asset to Prayer view this upcoming season in that receiver's room. It's going to be time for everybody to step this thing up. Like I said, Savage can line up in a two-by-one receiver set and break coverage with no problem. You can line him up in a three-by-one receiver set with him being the odd man out, with him being the only man on his side of the field. And guess what? All I'm going to tell you is this. Watch him go. That's it. Just watch this. Watch this young man go. Savage, like I said, this young man is definitely going to be a great asset, and you're going to see him and QB1 kindly connect with one another uh, this upcoming season with them passes being thrown down the field to him. Again, I, I, I've seen last season a lot of the DBs that was coming to a lot of the swipe program, they were getting bigger DBs so that now that these bigger receivers are coming into all of these different programs, they can cover them without, the, without it being a problem. Well, now, guess what, guys? Now you're going to make sure your technique is on point because if it's not – it's going to be a tough, rough day for you. And trust me, Prairie View a and is looking to get some get back. They're looking to get their lick back. They feel that they should have been in that SWAC championship playing last season against Jackson State. But you know what? It's, it's, hey, it's said and done. This is a new year. This is 2023. All I can tell you is I'm waiting to see Shamar Savage and the Prairie View a and Panthers get out there on the field and get after it this upcoming season. Congratulations to you, Shamar Savage, on signing with the Prairie View a and Panthers University football program. And truly can't wait to see what you guys are going to look like this upcoming season and get out there and do some great things and have these folks talking about Prairie View and what they got to offer out there. But, guys, you know what? Coach going to go ahead and get on up out this thing. But until next time, be the one and lead.